Thank you very much for uh, having us here. I'd like to uh, thank the host and the organizers for the wonderful conference here. Um, my name is Berif van Halderen. I'm uh, from the Netherlands, from ML Net Labs, and I'd like to give you a bit of an overview on what the current status is of Open DNSSEC. Um, I, I don't want to dwell on, on DNSSEC because it has been told <laughs> enough about uh, today and the past few days. I just want to give to people that do not know Open DNSSEC at all a small uh, pointer to where it sits. Um, DNSSEC uh, gives a new dimension to uh, DNS and it adds, uh, instead of having a static zone file which sits in your name server, it adds constant resigning, management of keys and serial serial number, which adds to quite some complexity. Now, open DNSSEC targets that in solving uh, that, um, by, but not by providing yet another name server, but instead of acting as just a bump in the wire. So you keep your existing uh, name servers in place uh, and open DNSSEC will sit somewhere in the pipeline where uh, uh, your DNS structure is. Uh, this can be very simple. In a simple uh, deployment, it's just a file in, file out basis. But if you have a complex setup with a hidden master and uh, some provisioning system for your zone files, it will act just transparently to those hidden name servers and provisioning servers and will sit in the middle of there. So that's all about opening in a sec where it sits and, and what it does. <coughs> It's most major change uh, that have been around for the past one and a half year is actually a non-technical change. Um, OpenDNSSEC was uh, initiated uh, by a number of organizations who all deserve their credit, um, but the, uh, the leadership of the project was in the hands of the .se TLD. But the developers were spread out across Europe um, in different organizations, also doing other tasks. And uh, it became necessary to refocus the attention to open ENSEC. Um, and LNET Labs was already participating in that project. Uh, and basically, we took up the answer. We took it up and said, OK, we can take over the entire leadership of the project, if you, if you wish. and um, Basically, this allowed for a lot of focus to the project, uh, again, because having the project management and, and the development in place puts your money where your mouth is, and you have to do it yourself if you promise it. Now, depending on how you uh, measure things, a little over a year, transferred has been uh, transferred to NLNAP Labs, and we uh, secured the future development and the maintenance. Um, and LNET Labs may be known to quite a number of you, or not. Uh, we're a relatively small, not-for-profit organization, and we focus on DNS, but also on other kinds of things in, which involves the good of the internet. Uh, we, all our software is open uh, uh, source, and uh, we target an open and free internet that focuses on standards. We're also involved in IPv6 routing research and, and standardization, and we generally spread the word of an open and free and safe internet. Uh, we already have a stack of, of software from DNS, and that's NSD, Unbound, uh, GetDNS, and LDNS. Uh, you see here that we have multiple solutions because we try to do everything right for a specific uh, um, Tasks. So an authoritative server is something else than a resolver, and we have separate systems for them. And this is also why opening in a sec fits our stack, because it does one thing well, or less. We try to do it well. Um, a, a small note, because uh, it has become necessary due to stupid taxation reasons to also found a, a company, and uh, we We'll try to use this uh, company more in future. So you might, if, if you already know NLNet Labs, you might 
see this name more, Open Net Labs. Um, but it's just a full subsidiary of uh, uh, NLNet Labs. We need it for taxation reasons. Um, and, and do our commercial activities in there. But it does not mean that our software will be further commercialized. Now, what has been actually the biggest technical change? Well, a, quite a huge change. Oh, it's already getting late. <laughs> um, one of the major components of Open in a second comp consists of two components. The, one of the major components, which does the key management of the system, the enforcer, has been completely overhauled. Most of the software has been rewritten of it. Um, previously, in versions 1.4, we now have 2.0, uh, previously, once a key rollover was figured out, it was taking place, the steps that needed to take place in uh, order to perform a key rollover were more or less fixed. Um, the open ENSX allows you to set a whole set of parameters. You have a lot of flexibility in there, but once a rollover was taking place, you should not stop it being taken place. Now, with the new enforcer, you can basically do anything. You can change any parameter while it's being in the process of a rollover. Now, this for people that have done a rollover either by hand or with the old uh, uh, open ENSX implementation. Changing a TTL value of a key of a sign signatures while being in a rollover, that ha can I wreak havoc. And you can completely go bogus because it will prematurely revoke a key. Now, with this new enforcer, the enforcer is more aware of its environment. It knows more or less what the state is of the key keys and the signatures out on the internet, whether signatures are just being rumored out there or are omnipresent on the internet, and the same for keys and for signatures. So this allows you to change TTL values, propagation delays, and any kind of parameter on the fly. Do you want to do that? Well, actually, you're sometimes forced to do that because things happen on the internet. Your parents might change uh, these values. But it also allows you now to perform an emergency rollover. So while being in a rollover, if something goes wrong for a certain reason, you can initiate a rollover to a new key while not, uh, well, and skipping the key that you were just trying to enter. Um, you can now roll to unsigned. Uh, you can do uh, double RSIC uh, rollovers. Don't know if you ever want to do that. A double DS rollover, um, and you can also do algorithm rollovers, changing the, uh, the, the security level of your signatures. Um, this requires a different type of rollover. You can now also do this because we are more aware of how actually the DNS protocol uh, works on the internet. Um, and you don't have to worry anymore about going bogus. Now, some other changes. Um, because OpenENSEC is intended to sit in this tool chain, it would be very nice also to support unsigned zones. They still exist. Currently, we also support passing through unsigned zones, so you can, don't have to make special tooling to go around it. Um, it's lighter on the CP load because we know exactly what to do when instead of uh, periodic probing. Um, Shared keys, combined keys, it allows you to have many zones, but share a single zone signing key amongst all these zones. Um, it does not need, require you to perform the rollover all at the same time. Um, somewhat skewed in time is fine. Combined signing keys, ZSK and KSK, if they have the same security level, you can use a, a single key. And there have been some less important changes, but some of the command line interfacing has been changed um, and, and, and the message is given out by them. So be aware of that. Um, th that's basically a small overview of how, what's been changed, but I also want to peek into the future because uh, the 2.0 version has taken a long time. 
And this is going to be changing. We're already in halfway the progress of releasing a 2.1. And we intend to do a far more incremental development here. And in this development, I, we're really looking more about what's in, in real estate is called location, location, location. It doesn't matter always how well the house is built. You also need to be aware where it sits. The same should be true for opening in a sec. Um, all kind of technical changes may be necessary, but why is because of the location where it sits. Um, the location of the user. We want to put the user, um, give it a higher pedestal. Uh, it, it's sometimes now very hard to open the, use open the in a sec if something goes wrong. Um, we want to give far better feedback, not always require the user to go back to the syslog files in order to find out what's happening. Um, it's so that should improve its ease of use. There are a number of other things in this area as well. And also, OpenNSX is highly configurable. Any parameter can be changed, but you also have to specify all these parameters. And often that's not necessary because values can be inferred or there can be sensible defaults. So. You can still override it, but we want less specification and more co uh, convention. Another location aspect is the, what I tend to think of as the procedural environment, um, to allow for faster updates, dynamic updates even. Um, because it sits in a tool chain, so people demanding uh, faster, um, <coughs> yeah, faster results out there. Um, we also want to be more aware of the actual changes of the zone on the internet. If you forget to publish your zone, your pipeline breaks, um, OpenDNSSEC is currently not aware of you not publishing your zone. This is something, it's not applicable to all environments, but for some environments, uh, especially the smaller ones, this can make a huge difference. So it can monitor whether a DS record has actually been submitted rather than relying on you saying so. And some operational uh, environment changes. Um, monitoring, um, better insight in tasks. We have many requests already for, it's nice to know what the next task will be, but what will be the task after that and after that? When will the complete roll over be finished, so I can monitor that and integrate with other programs in the DNS chain. Now, all this location, being aware of it, also involves your input, because we're not a DNS operator and we'd really like to know what your biggest against OpenDNSSEC is. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Barry. Tenemos uh, preguntas o Comentarios. Eh, yo tengo una pregunta. Um, la voy a hacer en español. Um, yes. Sí, el... You mentioned that the open DNSSEC is put between a zone generation or a hidden mask and the public uh, the publication the pipeline there are certain recommendations that you should have a validator precisely before publishing it a validation of uh, that the zone is correct you mentioned the enforcer it also could act as a validator and in that case you would need to have another one another system after open DNSSEC? Yes. Um, si. It's not a part of the enforcer. Uh, the enforcer should just be aware of introducing keys and, and working with keys, but looking whether a zone is correct um, before actually publishing it, um, that, 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 which means that once, the, once the signing has been done, uh, a zone may be vetted in order uh, to give the approval to push it through the chain or to give off some alarm or whatever. Um, 
we have been looking whether we should do that as part of this project, but actually decided against it because that would mean that we're just implementing our own software again um, to, uh, to validate the zone. It's better to have a, a different tool, and there exist tools. And there's one based on NSD that can uh, indicate whether a zone is correct or not. That signal could be fed back into OpenEMSEC in order uh, not to uh, continue with a rollover. Thank you. No hay más preguntas. Bueno, le damos las gracias. Un aplauso a Berry.